Hey guys, welcome back to our Swordfish 101 series. And if you're watching this and you're getting into sword fishing and you've bought and ordered a harpoon or you're thinking about getting a harpoon and you have no idea how to set it up, we've got you covered because we're going to walk you through that today. When you get your harpoon, it's going to come in three different sections. You've got the bottom, the middle, and then you got the shaft right here that the dart tip goes on, okay? So you wanna go ahead and screw those together, but then what we would tell you is go ahead and put some dielectric grease on that thread. You wanna screw it together and not put some of that dielectric grease or some grease lubricant on there, because then the day that you go to take it apart, it's gonna be seized with the salt water and you're never gonna be able to unscrew your harpoon. Now, we never really take ours apart. We kinda of keep them on the boat all the time. Uh, unless we're doing uh, you know, a charter for bottom fishing, we, we take all of our swordfish, the leads and our harpoon baskets off and our harpoons, um, but we never really take them apart. But in the event that you wanna take it apart and store it or travel with it, you wanna make sure that you lube that up with some dielectric grease. So once you've connected the pieces together and you go ahead and you screw on your shaft, the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna take your dart tip and you wanna go ahead and slide it on. And the dart tips are gonna come with two, two different um, rope or cable right here, right? And so this is a cable one, it's a rubber coated stainless steel cable. And then our other one is a rope. Um, this is our backup dart. The main one that we use has a rope on it. And we like to use that one first because that one's gonna put less damage on the fish. So if we only got a dart to fish once, we're gonna use that one. The rope is a lot softer. Obviously, you can imagine that if this is in the flesh of the fish tugging at it, this is gonna make more damage to the meat. Uh, it doesn't do anything to the fish, but you know, when you're, when you're cleaning it and you're gonna eat it, the part that has the, the harpoon shot in it's gonna have a big hole in the meat. So once you put it on, you've got your dart tip on, and the next thing you wanna do is you wanna come down to this section, and we have our harpoon set up with the paint stick method. And so basically what that means is, we put a paint stick here to hold the line tight in place. And the reason for that is this dart tip cannot be loose. This line cannot be loose like that because when you pick it up and you're gonna throw it, this uh, dart could slide off of here. And if the dart slides off of here, you're gonna throw it at the fish without the dart on it. It's not gonna do anything, right? And then you gotta pick it back up, put it back in. So what the paint stick allows that you do is you're gonna loop this line right into the paint stick and you're gonna pull it tight and pull it up against the bottom of the paint stick here. And now that line is tight right there on your dart and it's not gonna come off when you lift it up and you throw it into the, into the water. Now what the, this also allows is that once you dart the fish, you want this line to come out. You don't want the fish swimming away with the harpoon because as this is moving, it's gonna rip the flesh and this is gonna come out. So what you want is you hit the fish, the dart is gonna slide off and this line is gonna pull out of here and continue to pull through. The line will keep going on the harpoon and it flows through your harpoon as the fish swims. Your harpoon is kind of floating in the water with the line going through it. So we're gonna walk you to that now. We're gonna go step by step. So you've got this here first. We're gonna loop this through. We'll show you exactly what I'm talking about now. And you're gonna pull it tight right here up against your paint stick. And now you've got it nice and stretched, okay? If you don't use the paint stick method, you can also put electrical tape right here. Okay, you're gonna have to do it every single time, but you can get some electrical tape and you wanna keep this stretched and put tape here. And what you wanna do is put a little bit of tape, enough to hold it in place, but not too much that this is gonna stick into the fish and that tape's not gonna break because you want the tape to break. And I'll show you why now in a second. The next thing that you're gonna do, and we, guys, I'll tell you, we bought our line for our harpoon at uh, rjboylestudio.com and this is great. It comes, they sell this thing ready to go. You've got your thousand feet of line. You've got your jug on it. The jug's got a light and you're gonna need that light because if you're fighting a fish into, you know, past sunset and you know, that can happen, that, and they spool your whole harpoon line and that jug is in the water, the only way that you know where the fish is is with that light flashing. Okay, and I'm gonna show you a, a neat trick that we do because that light is crimped on, the light doesn't last forever. So when the light goes out, we have a cool trick that we're gonna show you now um, for how to clip another line on. 
So once you get your line uh, coming out of your basket, you've got it all set up here with your little clip. You wanna make a little loop in your line and this is where you're gonna clip your line to your harpoon. So at the end of your harpoon, you've got this shackle. And this shackle is gonna have the line going through it, okay? And this is what's gonna keep your harpoon from getting lost in the water because the line essentially, your thousand feet of line from one tip to the other tip is gonna go through here. So you'll be able to retrieve your shaft, your harpoon shaft. You're going to stick your line right here through the shackle, okay? And that's gonna come all the way up here and you're gonna clip this onto the end of your dart line, okay? And now it's connected. The next thing that you wanna do is you're gonna come back over here and you're going to clip your harpoon on this long line clip. And guys, the reason why you're gonna do that is you don't want the dart to pull out of the fish as the fish is swimming away. This harpoon is quite heavy, 12 pounds, probably something around there, 12, 13 pounds. That if the dart pulls out of the fish, that dart can come back through here and come through the shackle and you'll lose your harpoon. So with that loop that you created, you're gonna take your long line clip and you're gonna clip the rope right here, okay? Now this will allow the rope to go through the harpoon, but it will always be clipped right here so you're never gonna lose your harpoon. And now you've got all this line hanging out and this doesn't make for easy throwing of the harpoon when you're trying to do it. So what you gotta do here is you're gonna take your paint stick and you're gonna come up tight on the beginning and then you're gonna come up tight on the end, okay? And so you've got that little loop right there. Then what we like to do is right here, we're gonna put a piece of electrical tape, okay, to keep it tight. And then we're gonna put another piece of electrical tape back here. And you can see the remnants of the electrical tape. So your harpoon will be set up just like this once it's complete. Again, guys, with the electrical tape, you don't want to wrap this thing a hundred times that it's not going to break. The whole objective of the electrical tape is just to hold the line in place right here so it's out of your way when you throw it. Once you stick the dart into the fish and the fish takes off running and it pulls the dart out of the shaft, both of these electrical tapes are going to break and allow the line to go through your harpoon. All right, guys, so if you haven't bought your harpoon and you're wondering where you could get your harpoons, there's a lot of harpoons out there. Some of them are very poor quality. Um, some of them are very good quality. The harpoons that we use on the boat are Scourge of the Sea harpoons. And this company is up in the Northeast. Um, I want to say Connecticut, but we'll put their information here on the video so you can see it if you want to order it. Um, these are excellent harpoons. A lot of the harpoons that are used on the show Wicked Tuna come from this company. Uh, if you're interested in ordering it, give Captain Mike a call. They could ship it right to your front door or wherever you're at. The other thing that we want to talk about, guys, is the basket of line. It is important, essential, that when you get your line, you, you get at least, I would tell you, a thousand feet of line. And again, this basket of line with the jug we got from rjboylestudio.com. They are um, up here in Fort Lauderdale, but if you don't live close, they could ship to you as well. He's got everything that you need there, but you gotta have a thousand feet of line. There's a lot of times that we have hit a swordfish and you dart it, and a swordfish can very easily pull a thousand feet of line. Being hooked to your uh, electric reel and still dump a thousand feet of line off of your harpoon and pull the buoy into the water, and now you're fighting the fish on the dart line and on the fishing rod. Having said that, it is critical, I think, in my opinion, that you carry a minimum of two harpoons on the boat. Because once you harpoon the fish and it dumps all of your line out, now you don't have a harpoon and you're pulling the, harp the fish on the dart line and you're reeling them on the electric reel. And when that fish gets next to the boat again and you've got it boat side, if it's a big fish, you might not be able to stick a gap in it and be able to hold it. So you're gonna have to get a second harpoon to throw at that fish before you can get that fish on the boat. So if you're gonna get started, you gotta go out with at least one. This is not an easy fishery, and a lot of these fish, if they're fighting for their life, you gotta stick a harpoon in them. I would tell you at least one, if you're gonna start, I would not go any less than two. We fish two all the time on the boat. We've never had to go above two, but we have had to use both.
And guys, lastly, I know I talked about this at the beginning of the video is, you know, when you buy this, this setup from RJ Boyle, it comes with a deep drop light crimped on. Okay, and the deep drop lights are essential when you're fighting a fish into the night or the sun is going down. And you, you have to prepare for that because you never, you cannot control the size of the fish that bites your hook. And you get three, four, 500 pound fish that bites your hook, that's gonna take you a couple hours of fighting that fish to be able to get land that fish. And like I said before, you're gonna get that fish up and you might be able to stick a harpoon in them. Sometimes you might not. And they're gonna dump 1500 feet of line off of your reel in a second. And it's like you're starting to fight all over again. So definitely make sure that if you don't buy this from RJ's place, and you buy it somewhere else that you have a light on here. These are water activated strobe lights. Now this light comes crimped on. And the other thing that we did, because these lights are gonna go bad, is we took a piece of leader and we went ahead and crimped one on to a long line clip. So when the light goes out, we could take a new light that we've got ready to go and we're gonna come over to our jug and we're gonna clip that light onto our jug. And now you're safely fishing again. Okay, and you don't have to keep these hooked up on your jug at all times, guys. You can have this in your bag, you can have it in your console. You're fighting a fish, it's getting dark. I would tell you before you get to the point where you're pulling, the fish is pulling line out of your basket, go ahead and clip your new light on so you've got it ready to go. Guys, I hope this helps set up your harpoon and continues to help you on your journey to catch your swordfish and your fish of a lifetime. Give it a go. Let us know in the comments if you have any other questions. We'll be glad to help you out.